Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that, as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, whose Son Jesus Christ gives the water of eternal life, may we thirst for you, the spring of life and source of goodness, through him who is alive and reigns, now and forever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. There was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, there is a pool, called in Hebrew Beth Sapha, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath for the Gospel of the Lord. Peace like a river in my 
this own I've got love like an ocean I've got love like an ocean I've got love like an ocean in my soul I've got love like an ocean I've got love like an ocean I've got love like an ocean in my soul I've got joy like a fountain I've got joy like a fountain I've got joy like a fountain in my soul I've got joy like a fountain I've got joy like a fountain I've got joy like a fountain in my soul festival of the Judeans and Jesus goes up to Jerusalem. Jesus, the Jew with all the people who are Jewish and he is part of the festival. And in Jerusalem there is the sheep gate and there is a pool in Hebrew called Beth Zatha which has five porticos. And in these lay many invalids, the, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. That's the setting. Now some of the older versions of the Bible and in your version, you might find it as a footnote um, where there's a verse that's now been um, removed. It sort of tries to explain what's happening in this story. So the verse that's been re uh, removed uh, talks about an angel coming down and disturbing the water in the pool. Um, because it's a story of when the water in the pool starts to shimmer or move or something stirred up, uh, people try and get down. The first one gets down uh, with the hope and belief that they will be healed. The reason it's not used in modern translations is because it's considered to be a later scribal edition and the oldest and what are considered the best, um, the best versions of the Greek New Testament don't have it. This is going back to the various papyri and it's a very finely honed area of expertise, but it's good to keep it in the mind, back of your mind because a scribe very early on felt that it would make a bit more sense. So the idea of an angel comes down and touches the water and stirs it up. You can't see the angel, but the water is stirring and that's why it's stirring in this pool and you get down as fast as you can into the water and you could be healed. There was a man who had been ill for 38 years. That's a long time to be ill. Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been ill a long time. Do you want to be made well? It's one of those really wonderful John type questions. Jesus asks a question that gets to the very core of things. What's really going on here? The man says, Sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. It's not really an answer, but it is an answer. Yes, he does want to get well, but he understands the transaction that's involved in getting well. The transaction in this place, with these porticos and with this, um, with this pool, the transaction is that you get down first with the hope that you're going to be healed. And this man can never get there fast enough. And you presume that the stirring of the water is not something that's happening all the time, but it's happening when people aren't expecting it. It's really almost like a lottery. When will the water move? Because the angel has been through. And who will get there first? In some ways, of course, it points to the very competitiveness that's at the core of so much of being human. 
and by extension of many forms of spirituality. Uh, competitiveness not only in being successful but also competitiveness in being right and all those other things. So he does want to be gate well but it's all within the context of a contract that lives in that world. It's not a good contract is it? But often for most of us that's what we do. We live in a world, we're unaware of what's going on around us except that we live in that world. We're not aware of some other opportunity or possibility. For this man, the only possibility is that the water will be stirred and he will get there first and he may be healed. Jesus says to him, stand up, take up your mat and walk. And at once the man was made well, he took up his mat and began to walk. The story finishes ominously with, now that day was the Sabbath, because his walking with the mat will be construed as work. Pointing to the very next issue, which will be how sometimes our religious world is so constrained by what our customs and our expectations are, but anyone within our religious world who doesn't conform to that will be in trouble. So we have two pictures of what is essentially one world, a closed world of religious observance and belief. And into that world Jesus comes and he, he, you can see him, he just cuts across it. And it's now something quite different. Jesus doesn't use magic words. Incidentally, Whenever you read Jesus' miracles in any of the four Gospels, you will notice there are no magic words. And whenever Jesus uses the, um, uh, the Aramaic or the Hebrew, the, the Gospel writers are very concerned to translate it. There's no magic here. There's no magic because there's only faith. And the only faith is the faith in this man, Jesus Christ, who dies and will rise again. But Jesus says to this man here, very early in John's Gospel, he says, stand up, take your mat and walk. Walking and being in the way, in the sense of walking the way, is very much a concept in the New Testament and then into the church of following Jesus. Jesus says, take up your mat and walk. Uh, Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. Uh, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. Across our various superstitions, our various mindsets, because our mindsets um, might not look like superstitions, but they often are. Um, our mindset is just a mechanical way or a way we're just locked into a of what's worked in the past or what seems to work in the present, Jesus cuts across those mindsets and superstitions and speaks directly to us. Come and follow me. Walk in this way. So your spiritual exercise this week is to think about the ways in which your spirituality is set up in ways that are either superstitious or that are just caught into a mindset of what's going on around. Some of it will look very, very holy and good. But we need to always ask the question, where is Jesus? How do I hear him speaking to me? How will I follow him? And where will that take me? Of course, there's no easy answer to any of those questions. But learning to discern the voice of Jesus is the constant task of the Christian and of the church. The Christian church is the place where we are not only very much set in our ways because traditions keep us earthed and safe, but also prepared, if necessary, to break the traditions, to walk in a different way, to find another way, because this will be the way of life. Stand up, take your mat and walk. May Jesus be the one you hear calling you to stand 
in the, his faith alone and walk following him the way of his death and resurrection. Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. The blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>